And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash a -Mash. Today we'll be talking about the coronal mass ejection and the process of deduction and how it is indeed Earth-facing. First, let's look at the closest star here. You're looking at three different wavelengths. It's 211 plus 304 and 171 angstroms. The corona mass ejection came from someplace down here in the southern hemisphere, it looks like. And it's, it's actually so Earth-facing that it's actually tough to get to the bottom of the direction of it. And part of it is expected to be offset a little bit to the west. Let's take a look at the viewpoint from Lagrangian point five. Lagrangian point five, the location of stereo A, and here is the view from stereo A. And you can see this coronal mass ejection propagating. For you new viewers, Earth would be out in this direction from the stereo A Lagrangian point five. And we actually forecasted this one a couple of days in advance. Great view there of the propagation of this quite slow moving coronal mass ejection. Let's rock that back. Some ejector coming out of the opposite side of the sun as well, an indication of westward facing components, but there's that coronal mass ejection, and we are expecting part of this to strike the Earth's magnetosphere. And before we go on, let's go to Lagrangian point one to check out the view from the Soho Lasco C2 and C3. So here's the Soho Lasco C2. And you can see some component of this looks like it will miss to the west, but we do see a bit of a halo. So it's pretty diffuse coronal mass ejection, folks. But there is an expectation of some of this to strike the geospace. Here's the Lasco C3, which is a little bit better view. And you can see some ejecta coming out of all portions of the obscurement disk there, an indication that it is headed directly toward you although it is offset a little bit to the west. I hope you're able to see that. I hope there's sufficient contrast on that view for you to be able to see that. Let's bring it back to the beginning and let it play through here. It's probably easier to see at higher speeds. And we'll show you forecasts for when we expect that to get to the earthly region momentarily. First, some more direct views of the sun from the SDO. Here's 193 angstroms, and we've got some south pole oriented coronal holes, which you can see rotating into the earth facing zone here in the lower left. The southeastern quadrant of the closest star. And the possibility for additional coronal mass ejections has not been exhausted. So we've brought up a composite image here. This is uh, 193 and 304 angstroms together in hopes that we'd be able to show you the coronal mass ejection. And it's not all that visible. You can see a little bit of activity down here in the southern hemisphere. Here's a close-up of that area. And this area below our Earth scale here, this active region, actually is now a sunspot. I believe it's 2815 will be assigned to this one. It is already a beta-class sunspot, so the likelihood of solar flares has gone up a little bit here. And again, the possibility of coronal mass, additional coronal mass ejections is still there, folks. This is 211 angstroms. And this basically just... Uh, 
exaggerates coronal holes. It is one of the iron UV emission spectra wavelengths from the SDO, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And here's a diagram of the solar system. Happy New Moon. And leave us a comment if you noted any reverse werewolves, people who are getting less hairy, sleeping in, and switching to vegan diets around the new moon. There's where things will be in one week. Shout out to all our reverse werewolf viewers. Here's a diagram of, it's a star chart from in-the-sky.org. If you want to make your own, put in your location. And if you're up before dawn and you have clear skies and a view of the ecliptic, you may be able to see Saturn and Jupiter rising ahead of the sun. The radio flux has dropped all the way down to 70 solar flux units, basically down to solar minimum conditions. There's the one-year chart to put it in context. And does anybody know the record? The record, the highest ever measured 10.7 centimeter radio flux. The answer is 55,000 solar flux units measured in 1991. We'll talk about it later in the video during the cosmology segment. And here is the Space Weather Prediction Center's forecast. And you can see this slow moving coronal mass ejection. Expected to get to the Earth on the 13th. So around midday the 13th, we're expecting the peak density there. Again, it's a very low speed coronal mass ejection, and it's pretty diffuse as well, according to the imagery on the Lasco C2 and C3. Fagradals Fiala is still erupting, and here's a live feed of the Icelandic volcano, which has been evolving and filling up its crater valley as it becomes a shield volcano. We've been documenting it. Check out our earlier videos for the past week or so. And there is a playlist available at youtube.com slash smashomash slash playlists. And let's see what other volcanoes are erupting here at volcanodiscovery.com. Fuego now back on the list. And let's start from the top. Sakura Jima is exploding. Flight level 070, it's a 7,000 foot ash plume. Similarly sized ash plume at Ducono as it explodes. 7,000 foot ash plume. Popocatapetl. 18,500 foot ash plume in central Mexico as it explodes. Fuego in Guatemala exploding. 14,000 foot ash plume. Sangay exploding. 20,000 foot ash plume. Revenador exploding. 16,000 foot ash plume. Saban Kaya, ongoing possible emissions from there, are a reminder not to pole vault the caldera. And Sofriere on the island of Saint Vincent exploding causing some evacuations. And now's the time to remind our viewers to please do not attempt to pole vault the caldera, as that could be an unhealthful endeavor. And we would prefer for our viewers to be healthful. So please do not pole vault the caldera. And if you'd like some merch with that, you can find a link to our Smash-O merch at our homepage, which is located at smashomash.com Remember folks, please do not pole vault the caldera. Let's see what earthquakes are kicking off. We saw two six magnitudes in the past 24 hours, as well as some deep quakes such as this one here at the Philippines. <clears throat> a 6.1 at over 300 kilometers depth. We also saw a 6.0 at Papua New Guinea in the past 24 hours. And we'll just let the list scroll here. Here's a deep quake in Indonesia, a 4.8 at over 540 kilometers depth. Series of mid-level 4 magnitude quakes. So quite a few quakes kicking off here. <clears throat> Here's a deep quake at Indonesia, 5.1 at over 112 kilometers depth. And leave us a comment if you've got earthquake forecasts, and especially let us know what those forecasts are based on. Here's a deep quake striking Brazil. That's an odd spot for one. It's awfully far inland from the plate boundary there. That deep quake at Brazil at over 550 kilometers. Let's check out the location of that, as that is a bit of an odd one. 
Anyway, there's the location of that. That deep quake in Brazil. Again, a 4.1 magnitude at over 550 kilometers estimated depth. And let's continue on here back to some space weather data. The GOES X-ray flux over the past three days. No solar flares and no proton strikes here either. No surprises there. These are able to be forecasted to some extent. We saw the GOES magnetometer reach very low levels here. Made it all the way down to 51 nanotesla. Anyway, that's the three-day chart of the GOES magnetometer as measured by the GOES-16. Next, looking at the top view ecliptic plane field plot, it's a polarity diagram of the potential field surface source lines associated with the heliospheric current sheet. And it gives us great insight into what's going on. And you can see a bunch of bunched up plasma there. Those, those bunched up potential field surface source lines there are a bunch of plasma suspended in the corona. And there are still significant filaments that will be able to erupt. We'll keep you posted on it. It's part of the purpose of our channel. Here is the line of sight coronal hole plot. And we see some coronal holes rotating in here, as we said earlier in the video. Not quite reaching up to the equator, but getting close to the equatorial region are these South Pole red-oriented coronal holes. And you can see some changes in the Earth's B field. I mean, in the Sun's B field now, you can see finally the eastern portion of it is being pulled up and the western portion of it is being pulled down as the cycle 25 solar polar field reversal process is taking quite a while. Here's a line of sight ecliptic plane field plot and that blue line shows you the extent to which one of the solar poloidal fields is contributing to the BT. So the total field is the combined contribution of both the north and South Pole poloidal fields. And when you see this blue line up here like this, that's an indication that the Earth is in a South Pole oriented current sheet. I hope that helps. And I would note one more thing here from the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center that these filaments have not just vanished. There are still some filaments there. So while this animation shows them go mysteriously going away, as if they all ejected during that coronal mass ejection. That's not the case. There are still plenty of filaments there. So not sure what happened with that data, but let's move on to look at global geomagnetism. And the measurement of global geomagnetism is the planetary K index, and the K index currently at 2. Geomagnetic calm conditions. And how about the real-time solar wind? We just saw a sudden uptick here in the solar wind speed. Although quite minor, current conditions are 378 kilometers per second for the solar wind speed. Solar wind density 7.77 protons per cubic centimeter. Otherwise, nothing too exciting going on there. Here's a geospace magnetosphere movie. It should be four hours of data. And what you're looking at here is, a, is an estimation of nanopascals, magnetohydrodynamic pressure, based on the space weather modeling framework. Pretty steady here over the past four hours as far as pressure in the geospace. Coming a little closer to home, here are ground magnetic perturbations. And we're showing you the polar view first. And we'll show you the full globe view after this. And we don't see many changes in the Earth's B field, otherwise known as geospace delta B. So here is, uh, that's four hours of data as well, folks. And we're going to scroll up and show the global map. Ground magnetic perturbations. And we do see some magnetic pulses in the Central Pacific Ocean. And this is sort of an annual thing, folks. We regularly see these pulses in the Pacific Ocean around this time of year. It's uh, 
spring phenomenon. Now, we do regularly stream live to Twitch thanks to our Twitch viewers. Don't forget to subscribe over on YouTube.com slash Smashamash if you only view on Twitch, as you're missing probably about 60 or 70% of our content. Thanks to our YouTube viewers. And I would remind you not to forget to press like and subscribe. And thanks to everybody who leaves comments, presses that share button, and shares the content on your social media. If you're an influencer, drop me a line. We'd be more than happy to feature your channel and do an interview, etc. And don't forget to check out our playlists as well, youtube.com slash smashomash slash playlists. We do a lot more than space weather. Thanks to our BitChute subscribers. And let's do a cosmology segment. And welcome to our Twitch viewers. We're going to do a short cosmology segment here, and we'll stream live to Twitch for this. Today's cosmology segment, we're going to talk about the Mars Ingenuity drone, the helicopter here, part of the Mars Perseverance Project, is slated to fly today. So I'm excited about it. Are you? It's got very specially designed co-rotating main blades here. It's a two-prop design, so it doesn't need a tail rotor. And uh, yeah, going to make the first flight here, the Martian Wright Brothers moment. So this is just an animation, folks. And it is expected to take off from Mars's Jezero crater Sunday, April 11th at 12.30 p.m. local Mars time, which would be 10.54 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 7.54 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So it's a little test flight, just expected to hover three meters above the surface for about 30 seconds. That should be interesting and Perhaps we will cover it in tomorrow's Daily Space Weather video. Let's talk about random objects. We're not picking any today. Here's a totally non-random object. And if you're wondering what that is, this is the view of the Crab Pulsar. So the Crab Pulsar is one of the most consistent and powerful X-ray sources in the Milky Way galaxy. And it's such a consistent X-ray source that it's even used to calibrate X-ray equipment. Here's another view of it. This is the PanStars optical wavelengths. Here is the two mass, which is the infrared spectrum. And let's take a look at it on Galax, which is UV light. There it is in UV. The Crab Pulsar, the pulsar associated with the Crab Nebula. And here it is on Chandra, and they've got very, very high resolution imagery of it on Chandra. You can see it's got this dark spot and then this, it's the X-ray pulsar associated with the Crab Pulsar, the Crab Nebula, etc. And there it is on XMM Newton. I prefer the view from the Chandra. Fantastic view of the Crab. And well, there's an article on SciTech Daily about weird X-ray surges detected in the pulsar's radio bursts. So now this thing, this... Uh, this supernova remnant features all kinds of different wavelengths. It emits radio, it emits X-ray, it emits gamma ray. And so perhaps check this article out if you want to learn more about the Crab Pulsar. It's got some extremely powerful radio outputs. And this might teach us something about cosmology, studying the outputs of things like pulsars. So, Here are the X-rays coming out of the Crab Pulsar. And I'm letting the article scroll here. Feel free to pause the video. And let me just play this other video here real quick. We'll play a little segment here with no sound. And it's not going to let me go full screen, but... show you some of the animations here associated with the Crab Pulsar, one of the more interesting objects in the Milky Way galaxy. And this supernova 
event happened just about a thousand years ago. I believe it was the year 1054. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Crab Pulsar showing up in today's uh, Astronomy and Space articles. And last but not least, let's talk about the solar radio flux. So the radio flux The solar radio flux is a measurement of the radio output of the upper chromosphere and lower corona. It's 2800 megahertz, and if you're wondering what a solar flux unit is, a solar flux unit is a measure of flux density. And a solar flux unit is 10,000 joules. So 10 to the fourth joules is what a solar flux unit is. And here's some more information about it. Very interesting. Um, so perhaps check this out. Uh, this is linked from the Wikipedia article on it. If you click down here, International Solar Flux Unit, it'll take you to this page. And it's uh, 18 minutes past the hour, the NIST radio station at Fort Collins, Colorado, bro broadcasts a measurement in solar flux units of the solar radio flux at 2800 megahertz obtained from a radio telescope at the Pentagon Radio Observatory in British Columbia. Readings are updated every three hours beginning at midnight universal time. And our patrons would be well aware of this. And here are the other links cited there. Space Weather Phenomenon, part of the Space Weather Prediction Center. As well as these geophysical alert texts. So again, the radio flux all the way down to 70 here. And it's the most proportional number associated with sunspot number. And that's today's cosmology segment. We'll be back for a meteorology segment, Twitch. And let's continue on to talk about electron flux. Here's the one-year chart of electron flux. You're looking at greater than 2 mega electron volt levels. Here's a three-day chart. And we're seeing surprisingly low levels here. I actually forecast a little higher levels than this. And I was off. So we're seeing uh, low levels of electron flux here, and the forecast is for continued low levels. No forecast coming from me today. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. Here's a diagram of the Van Allen belts and so on. These are belts of highly energetic charged particles. There are two main Van Allen belts, the inner and outer, located here and here. And they're surrounded by electrons, and we show this daily to give people an idea of the altitudes of things in miles, such as the SDO which is located at about 22,000 miles. And here's the total electron content forecast visualization. We can expect to see some anomalies here at nighttime. And you can see, indeed, some minor anomalies. No big deal. That's the total electron content forecast. I'll rock this through. It'll give you an idea of where GPS errors are likely to occur. And here's another diagram of the atmosphere. We're showing this because the F ionosphere layer is our next visual. It's that red F right there at around 300 kilometers. Here is a 24-hour video of the ionosphere showing you the vibrational frequencies in megahertz. And this is 15 minutes of data per second. And we'll let this play through to cite any additional anomalies. We've seen some, although yesterday it had subsided a little bit. Still seeing some minor anomalies here over places like the Atlantic Ocean. Some rather sudden charge ups and charge downs, but nothing to really write home about there. And we show this data daily to help our viewers to understand the relationship between space weather and Earth effects, for example. If you want to read more about our mission, head to smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. Anyway, there's the latest image coming at 9 o'clock Universal Time. And next, welcome back Twitch. Twitch viewers, we are back for our meteorology segment, and let's get to it. First thing we're looking at here is nullschool.net's surface winds. And I would note some very strong surface winds right here on the west coast 
of Australia, seeing nearly hurricane force winds there, just under 60 miles per hour, just on that measurement alone. And let's look at the jet streams. Here are the jet streams of the eastern world. Powerful wind there on the west coast of Australia. Here are the jets of the western world. Quite chaotic jet stream flow there, especially over places like South America. Look at this S-shaped bend here. Backward jet stream over the eastern portion of South America there. And here are the surface winds of the western world. And I would note once again we have this low pressure ridge right here where we have very low wind speeds. And it all has to do with, one, the viscosity of cold air, and two, straight line winds, as winds tend to be accelerated when they are blown over water and decelerated when they're blown over land. You have basically a 90 degree bend here in the winds and a low pressure ridge associated with these winds meeting the land. There's also hot versus cold air thing going on, and I won't get into the physics of air viscosity at this juncture. Next, pressure maps. Here are pressure maps for planet Earth. Actually, here are pressure maps for planet Earth. <laughs> I don't know why that was so advanced, but let's go to the GFS forecast. Here's the GFS data. Here's where we expect things to be tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Continuing on to look at lightningmaps.org to see some more severe thunderstorms here in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Hey, Tallahassee, go out and look to the south and to the southeast. Dear Forrest Gump, if you're on a shrimp boat right now, please leave us a comment. If you're shrimping in the Gulf of Mexico, leave us a comment. And here's a U.S. Doppler radar map to show a powerful band of rain here, stretching all the way from the South Carolina coast, wrapping all the way around to the state of Illinois. So Illinois is going to have rain for an extended period of time here as this system rotates. And we've got some jet stream interactions that we'll show you in a moment. Some snow falling in Montana, some heavy snow in the northern U.S. Rockies. Here's a cloud layer map. You can see that powerful rotating system there. It is surrounded by dry mass of air, so it's not nearly as moist as it could be. And there's the water vapor map. And it looks like a bunch of sudden cloud nucleation happening here, and you can indeed see it. We're going to zoom in on the Florida Panhandle. So let's do a quick zoom here for all of you weather pornographers. We'll get these as close as we can. And there's the cloud layer. You can see this rapid cloud nucleation. It's caused because of hot air, folks hot air. It doesn't only come out of Colorado. Some of it comes out of the Gulf of Mexico. And there you can see the water vapor being added to the water vapor map and creating some massive pressure gradients. If you should be flying a plane through those areas, expect some turbulence to say the least. And that's today's meteorology segment. We'll have to say goodbye to Twitch and continue on with the daily space weather. So the next thing we're going to do is bonus features, folks. As this video is about complete, first thing we'll do is show you the latest hydrogen alpha imagery from the National Sunspot Observatory. So the, the latest imagery here comes from Udaipur, India. It's barely two minutes old. And again, you can see a bunch of filaments here. There are filaments up here, filaments down here, and a bunch of filaments around the eastern limb as well. As I said earlier in the video, they did not disappear. 
Anyway, that's the latest imagery in 6,562.8 angstroms. Hydrogen alpha, the outputs of ionized hydrogen from the closest star. And thanks, stargazers, by the way. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Don't forget to visit our own website, smashonash.org. We'll redirect you to smashonash.com. We've got our social media links there, as well as links to our merch. Today's official product is the Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera Mask. Yes, since we'll be wearing masks forever and ever and ever and ever, which is going to keep us safe, right? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Might as well get a mask with a public service message on it, like Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera. Again, you can link directly to that. You can link to our Redbubble shop from smashamash.com. It's this link right here, the smash -o merch Perhaps check out our Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera mask. It's quite handsome, and you'll be quite less handsome while wearing such a covidiotic garment. Thanks to the Smash team. Leave a comment, press share on your social media, tell your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros about the channel. Most of all, thanks to our patrons, the true source of funding for the content. Thanks to all of our new patrons from this month. Cheers. For you non-patrons, don't forget to enter our Slam Poetry Contest. However, for you patrons, you are, will, you are able to enter as well. You can find details to it at smashamash.com slash forum if you'd like to win a free month of our Patreon $3 per month tier membership. Do it. Smashamash.com slash forum if you like writing poetry, especially Slam Poetry. Here are some more bonus features in the form of the colorized magnetogram to show you this active region down here. Sunspot 2815. It's going to get a name today. There it is in close-up colorized magnetogram. Here it is in intensity gram. Magnetogram, intensity gram. It does have south and north pole oriented umbrae, as you can see here, which makes it a beta class sunspot. Again, likelihood of coronal mass ejections still there, still significant. Likelihood of solar flares has gone up a little bit with this weak-looking sunspot group. Last but not least, we're going to close things out with some more imagery of the closest star, El Sol. And if you've got comments for the sun directly, leave them in our comments. Perhaps we'll read them in a later video. Here's 171 angstroms, the full disk view. And we're going to show you a close-up of the southern hemisphere. So here's the southern hemisphere. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember to stare at the sun. Remember to view our other videos. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. Leave a comment. We'll see you next time. And may that solar wind be at your back.